Hey there, howdy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to class two of the Biblical Finance Intensive. It is fantastic that you are here. Kindly write in the chat your impressions of the previous class we had earlier. We value your feedback and look forward to hearing from you. Yes, kindly write to me now in the chat. I want to take a look. Write to me and inform me, was it awesome? Did you think it was truly excellent? I want to know, yeah. And one more thing, send me a message. Where do you currently reside? Send me a message. I would like to examine it in this location. Yes, it began with press play. We are commencing our second session of the intensive course on principles of biblical finance. It's wonderful that you're here with me because you have received this prayer answer to have your finances under control, make additional money, and begin investing in order to fulfill God's dreams in your financial life. Yes, yes, these classes from the initial stage are already taking place every day at two different times starting today, and they always have different content for each session that is held. Yes, each of these classes will have a list of attendance. Yes, and I will inform you about this at a later time. So you are unable to lose anything, but you have the ability to speak, doctor. When I registered, I had observed that there were a total of 28 classes, but now you have only mentioned a total of 21. Look, the seven most special free classes will be for the second stage, which will be the hands-on stage and won't be here on YouTube. No, no. There will be a total of seven exclusive classes specifically for individuals who have registered for free using the method I just described to you. Is that clear? Yes, understood. See, these classes won't be published on YouTube or any other platform. You will need to provide your description in the link that is available in the description of this video. All right? And here they refer to these seven costless classes of the second phase. Let's get to work, all right? Because in this stage, I will provide you with support materials and exercises to practice. And when I mention this, there are many individuals and there is always someone who inquires, oh, will there be any charges for that? And the response to that question is, well, no, it does not require any payment at all. It doesn't cost anything. Yes, yes, everything I've told you will be free for those who have enrolled in the Biblical Finance Intensive and are committed here with me. Got it? All right? Yeah? Yes, write to me in the chat now. Yeah, yeah, I desire, I desire. So on the contrary, you will realize that here you will even learn how to generate income by observing the classes. You want to know how to get a direct transfer of $200 into your account? Yes, a very special account. Yeah, look, stay with me until the end of the Biblical Finance Intensive because I have a lot of stuff for you and I am also going to talk to you about how this can happen in your life. Stick with me until the end and I will spill all the details on how to do it. And those lessons you will learn will show you how you can build your financial life on a solid foundation. Yeah, I am providing you with the biblical basis of financial management in this very moment. In order for you to have financial peace and thrive, regardless of the storms that come into your life, you will learn how to obey God in your financial life and get out of the red numbers, have your finances under control, make money to spare, and invest to fulfill God's dreams in your life. During this course, you will also gain knowledge of a plethora of finance secrets that you are not even aware you lack knowledge of, that you continue to be unaware of. For example, there are people who don't understand how it's possible to be in debt with the bank or lender and still receive money deposited in a checking account. There are individuals who are unaware that debts have an expiration date and consequently end up paying financial institutions a significantly higher amount than what is just. And you will see that all of this is possible. Even if you think finances are not your thing, even if you do not have a steady income or think you earn very little, or even if you are so deep in debt that you think your case is hopeless, there are still options and strategies available to help you improve your financial situation and achieve your goals. So comprehend one thing, you may be indebted by millions of dollars. You might possibly be under the control and influence of a ruthless loan shark. I want to tell you something very, very serious today, that your case can be resolved. Yes, you just need to undergo the kind of transformation that my students like Weberson and Marinalva went through during their journey. Take a look at Weberson's case. 
He even believed that the phone call to register for our course was a fraudulent scheme. It turned out to be a carefully laid trap. He owed money to a loan shark, had a ton of debt, and in 60 days, he not only got rid of the debts, but also the anxiety and depression. Yes, it is true, individuals overcome depression and despair when they have a clear understanding of the necessary steps to take in their financial life. This was precisely the situation for Weberson. Take a look at Weberson's case study. I lacked financial education, which ultimately led to a failed financial life. I became an entrepreneur, someone who, despite having a good salary and a good job, felt unfulfilled. And at the beginning of this year, while browsing the internet, I came across Dr. Italia's invitation to participate in an event, an intensive course on finances for the rich Christian. I saw it, thought it was just another opportunist trying to make easy money using practical formulas and didn't want to pay attention. However, that incident deeply touched my heart and had a profound impact on me. The first administration I experienced was a crucial turning point in my life. It was during this time that I gained invaluable insights, developed crucial skills, and formed lifelong connections. Looking back, I am grateful for the opportunities and lessons that the initial administration provided, shaping me into the person I am today. So I started putting into practice everything I was learning and applying the strategies I was learning in practice. What did I do? Paid off R$17, K debt with cold one, R$11, 4K with financial institution and R$2, 7K with another institution in over 50 days, managed to pay off debts. And I also began learning how to withdraw money from the bank. I, had, I didn't know I had the right to withdraw money lowering interest rates, negotiating with other debts I had from 5% to 2%, so trying to negotiate for me much less. I did math, a projection, and in this projection of mine, I managed to pay over 100K reais in bills. I have been learning a tremendous amount that I never thought was possible. Additionally, I have managed to save money solely by minimizing bank fees. However, the most impactful lessons I am still learning from the rich Christian are freeing me from anxiety, depression, and making my dream of transitioning from a fork to an investor a reality. The rich Christian is much more than a finance class. The rich Christian is the ministry that God placed on earth through Rodrigo and Doña Thela. Look, whoever has the chance to take part will witness a literal transformation of their life from water to wine. Weberson's case is common, yes, and it's relevant to the topic of this class, which is how to achieve financial peace, our ONC class on achieving financial stability. Another case that also has everything to do with financial peace is the case of my student Marina Alba, who had her credit card in the hands of a lender for several years. Check out Marina Alba's case. I have a doubt that I will carry with me for the duration of my life when it comes to financial matters, and it will always be on my mind. So how was my life before having a lot of debts, having a lot of debts, having loans consigned in the bank, having overdue debts in the market, in stores, and still owing a loan shark who held my card? He held my card, he withdrew my money, he only gave me the change. I didn't believe anymore, because I decided. I didn't know how to manage what I received, because instead of paying the bills with some leftover money, I would pay other bills and the interest would just keep increasing. With Dr. Tyler's guidance, I learned to start paying off bills with high interest rates, and I successfully paid off a few of them. I even paid the loan shark. I hadn't used my credit card in 10 years, but I possess it now, and I am grateful to God, to the divine glory. And one thing I know I've gained is that I can control my finances. I know I can pay today. I know what I owe to whom and when it's due. Unbelievable, isn't it? It was the loan shark who would retain the card, make withdrawals from their paycheck, and only provide them with the remaining amount. A genuine form of slavery indeed. However, how did you perceive it? Presently, she invests her resources and enjoys freedom, residing in a state of complete financial tranquility. Can you imagine spending 10 years just like her? Yeah, it's not just one month, one day. It is not a period of 10 years, that is a considerable amount of time. And to contemplate the fact that she has now become an investor, this is the power of applying in your life everything I will teach you from now on in this 100% free course. And why do I insist on bringing numerous testimonies here for you? Why? Look, because as per the Bible, testimonies build up and contribute to growth. Yes, the Bible brings us several cases of people, the history of people, right, right? Do you remember? And I'm here to build up in your life so you understand that it's possible to have your finances under control and have the financial peace you desire. And that's what we're going to talk about today in this class, how to achieve financial peace. Now, write to me in the chat, do you want to have financial peace? 
write to me, I desire, I desire. This is possibly one of the inquiries that individuals ask me the most, and I have ensured to delve into this subject in this comprehensive training program. And look, if I'm looking now in the chat, I want, I want, yes. If you want to have financial peace, start now by writing, I want. Yes, so good, so delicious. Undoubtedly, escaping the oppressor's grip has brought Marina Alba greater financial peace and a sense of liberation. Yeah, yeah, and I want you to think now, write to me here in the chat, what would bring you a greater sense of financial peace? While we're writing there, I want to tell you some news. What can I bring you? What would give you more financial peace? Look, exclusively in this intensive, we had the screening of a special documentary, like the one on Netflix, a really rich documentary, you know, a big production that I filmed with a lot of care for you. This documentary is truly inspiring to assist you in comprehending the number of individuals who are attaining financial peace for the remainder of their lives by implementing biblical principles. But coming back here, tell me, what would make you more financially stable today? Some people might think it would be a dream come true. By the way, this is a case I'm going to talk about in tomorrow's class, specifically in tomorrow's class three. I'm going to discuss this. Others may perceive it as liberating oneself from the enslavement of banks, loans, and debts, or as breaking free from the bondage of an undesirable job that they do not enjoy. Others may speak like that, but between now and the end of this class, I'm going to reveal the secret information about what will truly give you financial peace for the rest of your life. But for all this to happen in your life, I'm going to talk to you about something very serious, okay? Do you want to know this secret? You will need the foundation. You will need to start building your financial life on solid ground. Is that a yes or a no? Please let me know. Constructing the base of a dwelling requires a considerable amount of time. If you lack patience, the process can be highly demanding. However, if you desire to construct without a sturdy foundation, the house shall inevitably crumble. You require a foundation. The actual transformation originates from the foundation, from the fundamentals that I am providing you with here. And if you desire, if you wish to enhance your financial life, you long to experience the promises that God has for your life and actualize your dreams, you will need to acquire the knowledge of how to effectively manage your finances in order to make them a reality. And you must make a commitment. Take a glance at this word. Commit to being present and not missing a solitary second of these classes, ensuring your full dedication. It is crucial to understand that money serves as a tool to achieve God's purposes here on earth. This is already existing content that should be comprehended. If you lack the knowledge to handle this tool, you are at a great disadvantage in your ability to truly obey God's commands and fulfill his purpose for your life. In reality, it is not possible to modify your behavior in order to thrive if you do not undergo a shift in your mindset and perspective. Unfortunately, since we were kids, we've been programmed to think like poor people and not like prosperous people, which is a problem. So make the most of this chance for transformation that God presents to you, this response to your supplication, and attend all the courses in order because they are a progression. It's similar to a Netflix series, correct? Do you desire to witness the conclusion? You have to check out all of the classes, correct? This thing that I'm showing you here does not work with only one person or another, no. It has worked with thousands and thousands of super committed people from various countries around the world who have already had access and have applied this biblical knowledge in their financial lives. So let me restate it because this is of utmost importance. You must make sure to allocate time in your schedule to watch the classes every single day, yeah. You're gonna miss him afterwards, yeah. It is important. Why? There will be two classes per day. They are different classes, and I can only assure you that the recording of the classes will only be accessible for the day, all right? Look, do not forget, afterward you are going to miss me. I will be dearly missed and you'll realize it. 
I am presently here to let you know, okay? And it is at this particular point in time that the separation initiates between those who are curious and those who are highly dedicated to changing their financial life and improving their financial situation. I always state that there are three types of individuals. The inquisitive ones who are the ones that come to observe the class, desire the overview of everything. They lack the patience to listen, not even for an hour of class, but they dedicate hours and hours squandering time with things that will not provide them anything to alter their lives. These curious ones don't commit and don't change their financial life because they're always curious, looking at everything on the internet, but they never finish and they don't have the patience to finish anything. The committed ones are the ones who even attend most of the classes, but they don't apply themselves and just keep this knowledge to themselves. However, the individuals I am absolutely certain will truly and significantly transform their financial situations are the highly dedicated ones who actively and consistently participate in all the classes, diligently implement what they learn, and like devout Christians, generously share this invaluable knowledge with a larger number of people. When contemplating the acknowledgement of the extremely dedicated, we have devised two brand new features exclusively for this special event. The initial one, which I previously mentioned at the start, we will provide a complimentary completion certificate to all individuals who take part until the conclusion of the event, the intensive, and are included in the WhatsApp groups for the duration of the program. If you go out, you're going to lose. But it's not enough to just participate. It's important to bless other people with this same knowledge by sharing the invitation link that's here in the chat with more people. Let me explain it to you better. You can invite people to participate in the event. That's awesome. It is truly good to share. And sharing is Christian. It is a person that where are the super committed individuals? And what are you planning to do to reach a bigger audience? You will send this link to the person. Check it out. The link is right here in the chat, okay? And also in the description of this video, the individual is going to fill out their email information and gain access to the page in order to join the WhatsApp group. By the way, if you are not already a member of the WhatsApp group, feel free to join and connect with us. It's a great opportunity. Some of the content of this course will be exclusive over there. It is crucial that it is there. When you click on the link, you will need to enter your email address and then the page to join the group will be displayed for you to access. Do you participate in the church's WhatsApp group, for example, the prayer groups? Send them your link, people will sign up and you'll earn more points. Sharing, it is Christian, it is something that is very, very Christian. So start overflowing into other people's lives, allowing them to also have access to this knowledge that you are having here, okay? So in today's class, I'm going to divulge the things that perhaps you are not even cognizant of, which will be unveiled to you when you successfully achieve a state of financial peace. I am going to ask you once more, who desires financial peace? Contact me in the chat immediately. I want, yeah, yeah, with enthusiasm, with enthusiasm, with enthusiasm in this class, it's crucial to write in the chat, I want to. As I've already mentioned, it is crucial to begin from the bottom and work your way up, as constructing a house on an unprepared foundation is impossible. We must also construct the dwelling of our financial existence on the solid foundation, and that foundation is Jesus. Jesus Christ, the teachings he brings us, the biblical principles of administration that he teaches us are invaluable and guide our lives. And to give you the key and tell you how to have financial peace, today I need you to understand why most Christians can't thrive and can't have their finances under control, because that's what has caused the lack of financial peace in their lives. Based on research conducted at the Christian Rich Ministry, it has been found that a significant proportion, precisely 81.2%, of Christians are currently burdened with debt, or struggling to effectively manage their finances, resulting in a lack of leftover money for them to utilize. Yes, there are more days in the month than money, yeah? And if we take into account practicing all the biblical principles, such as, for instance, the law of the fifth part, you know, we are going to discuss this in the intensive. The law of multiplication, let's discuss this as well. 
the sowing, the servitude, and several other biblical principles of financial management lead us to the conclusion that the percentage of Christians who do not obey God in finances is even worse than we thought. And this is very serious. And what's the deal with this here? Why do more than eight out of 10 Christians not live up to God's promises in their financial lives? Why? Why do more than eight out of 10 Christians not have financial peace? Why? I have already assisted thousands of students from different countries globally in my mentoring programs. The vast majority of these students arrived in debt or without money. Investment was something very distant for them. The vast majority of them definitely did not have financial peace. Just with the testimonials from the people in the previous group, there are over 200, exactly 207 video testimonials that we received here at the Ministry of Transformed Lives. It is incredible to witness the remarkable things that God has accomplished in the lives of individuals who are willing, individuals who, if I desire, I am going to become, are willing to obey God in their financial matters and be good stewards of what he has entrusted into their hands. Additionally, I provide assistance to individuals who are already investors, who already possess knowledge on how to invest, but unfortunately, it constitutes a minority of the population. And I will inform you about the narrative of the majority of these individuals who approached me with a lack of financial peace, lacking knowledge on how to generate income, and without experiencing true financial peace in their lives. There's a group of people who arrived with low self-esteem, very embarrassed about their debts, and having reached a certain age without accumulating any assets. I recall numerous instances of individuals who felt ashamed to provide a negative testimony as Christians. There is another group of individuals who believed that they were earning an insufficient amount of money and were enslaved by it. Let us come to a consensus that they dedicated the entire month to working, working extensively. Merely to pay the bills is a form of servitude. Look, do you recollect the enslaved person? He exclusively toiled for the purpose of meeting his basic needs and lacked freedom. For bread and a roof, are you in agreement? If you have debts, then the same Bible states that whoever owes is a slave to the lender. It is not me who is talking. It is explicitly mentioned in the Bible. To another group of individuals, they were fleeing from financial difficulties, declining to acquire the skills to handle their finances. There is another group of individuals who did not adhere to the biblical principles of sound financial management, and the majority of them were not even aware of these principles. If it's true, many of them were trying to be faithful to God, but they were falling short when it came to the main biblical principles about finances. There is a fifth group of individuals who had faith that someday God would perform a miracle and enhance their financial situation. And for what reason was all of that happening? Why? I have to ask you, do you know the reason why? How and for what reason is this occurring? Why did these individuals spend their entire lives enduring suffering to have their finances under control? One reason is related to Katya, my student Katya, whom I will show you now. Take a look at Katya's case. My name is Katya Souza. I had the thought of a wealthy Christian when I was spreading the gospel of my faith. And so I mentioned affluent Christian while passing by. Affluent Christian, this is not for me, because my imitating belief, which was imitating, thought that we as evangelical Christians only prioritize the spiritual aspect and neglect other areas of life. And I went deeper into the gospel, the most free videos, and in this free video I was blown away. I came to the realization that my life was truly in a state of complete upheaval all over. And by the way, there was nothing remaining. I used to make payments for everything, right? However, there was no remaining capital available for investment or any other activities. However, after a short period of time in the course, it had already expanded my mind. I've already had a different attitude. Look at what's happening. My income, my second income, because I have two, one income, 110, is surplus 100%. Take a look at this incredible thing. Observe the impact that this course is having on my life. So, like, when we pray to God, when we're in communion with God, he does, he makes arrangements, he gets things ready for us. My take on the Christian course, I rely on Dr. Taylor. Did you know that Katya believed financial control and money management weren't something because it didn't seem to be something so spiritual? 
But when these people discover their true identity in Christ, everything changes. So most of the individuals who approached me in a state of desperation due to financial issues were not fully aware that they were considered as children of God. It's easy to say that everyone is a child of God, but understanding and living with the identity of being a son is not for everyone. And when you have the identity of a child, it's very different. One of the things you are entitled to is an inheritance. Just that it's not as simple as some churches have been preaching out there. So I'm going to explain it to you in detail. Look, what was happening, you see, these people started to believe that they weren't worthy of having money. They had the belief that they were not born to possess it. And maybe the destiny that God had in their lives, which was, was to stay in a state of being blessed. I was born this way, so my life must be like this. They started to lose their identity. And forget who they were, because forgetting that God made you for a much greater purpose than merely working to pay the bills, working just to pay off debts that accumulate over time. Simply because he lacks the correct understanding and fails to comprehend his true identity. These individuals initiate a denial of money, evade contemplation and discussion regarding money, and ultimately transform into slaves to money. That's why Jesus said in Luke 16, 8, write it down. Look at how they are in your life. The individuals in this world are significantly more intelligent and more astute in their business transactions than the individuals who belong to the light. What did the Bible tell us? The children of the light don't understand that God has already given us a guide on how to manage resources here on earth. And when you understand your identity as a child of God, things start to make sense. So jot it down in your notebook now. It's really important for your learning. Are you with me here? Yes? Your learning, we are in class two, intensive biblical finance. Yes? So let's go. Let's go. Right? You want to write it down in your notebook now. You want to know? Yes? I possess the identity of a child of God. Could you please write it down for me? I was brought into existence in the image and likeness of God. My father is the owner of both silver and gold, possessing great wealth and abundance. I will learn to manage my finances just like he teaches me. Yes, yes, congratulations on this initial learning experience. Yes, yes, it is a substantial amount of information, I am aware, but focus on what is most significant. I possess the identity of a child of God. Do not overlook or neglect to remember this fact. And continuing with the next lesson, there's a phrase that we really like here at the Christian Rich Ministry, which is the following. Make sure to write it down. You can either be in control of money or let money control you and dictate your actions. Which one are you going to choose? I'm going to repeat because it's really important. Write it down. Either money serves you or you serve money. Which option will you choose? Look, if you decide to serve, serve money wholeheartedly. You are a slave to money. If money serves you, it is just a tool. And this is what I want him to learn here. We must consider that the wealthy are enslaved by money. Actually, some of them are. Yeah, I know. But look, who spends their life working just to pay the bills and survive? What is it? If you only work every day to pay the bills and survive without any money left over, without investing, without applying biblical principles and finances to your life, what's the difference between a slave who works for their master in exchange for survival and food? No, no. Have you considered that? I am not perceiving a distinction. And when you lack comprehension of your identity and the significance of money in your life, you ultimately live like a slave without even realizing it. This is the worst. When we lose sight of our identity, of the purposes and dreams that God has for our lives, we start living a self-centered life focused solely on ourselves. And when you don't understand your true identity and you don't have a purpose with the resources that God puts in your hands, the consequence is the lack of resources. 
because you end up diverting the seeds, you are utilizing resources for something that is not aligned with God's purpose. Would you like me to provide an example? Take a moment to ponder the interest and fees you pay to the bank. Do you think it is God's purpose for me to spend all of my hard-earned money with the bank? With interest and fees? Absolutely not. Does not God desire this? Are you working for the purposes of the bank by any chance? Are you being the bank's slave? It's not for nothing that the Bible says that those who borrow are slaves to the lender. I want you to consider the individuals of God who were saved by Moses in Egypt. These folks were enslaved. They worked just for food, housing, and a bit of security. That is it. At the conclusion of the month, they had nothing and they did not accomplish or achieve anything either. They were employed by the Pharaoh for his own objectives. And until that specific point in time, they were not working for the objectives of God, no. Please take a moment to consider your financial circumstances. If not, that is completely fine as well. Have you worked a lot and at the end of the month you have nothing left? You solely pay for food, housing, and perhaps something for a small amount of security. What is the dissimilarity between this existence and that of a slave who belongs to a pharaoh? Hello, doctor. Now you can appear like a doctor. You intend to express that individuals who are unable to afford additional funds can regard themselves as slaves? Yes, yes, I am stating this. Whoever is unable to effectively budget and have funds remaining is continuously working each month solely to afford food and housing expenses. And he never has the means to live out God's promises, God's dreams. I lived like this for a long time, so I have no fear of saying it. God raised up Moses to liberate his people and enable them to dwell within his divine intentions, within the vision that God had for his people. There was a promise for that town, but as long as they lived on the defensive, praying for liberation, working for the purposes of Pharaoh rather than God, that promise could not come true, no matter how much they hoped and yearned for it. They were unable to move or take action in Egypt. That is the reason there was a plan to save them from God. And Moses was chosen to execute this plan. Correct? Correct? Do you comprehend? This is of utmost significance. Look, I am speaking at this moment. The promise was evident. My town possesses the identity of a child, not the identity of a slave. And that's why I am taking you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Now, please write to me in the chat because this is important. I have the identity of a son. This will be a prosperous land. And there in this land, just like what happened with Moses in his people, you will work for my purposes and not as a slave of the Pharaoh. Numerous individuals inquire of me now, but doctor, why can't I experience the promises of God in my life? I'm in debt, and I know this is not what God wants for my life. And here I want to get into the revelation of a very important biblical lesson. Jot it down. It's in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I am going to speak to you at this moment. Please write it down. Galatians 4, verses 1 and 2. But I say that even though the heir is underage, there is no difference at all from a slave, even if he owns everything. However, he's still under the thumb of guardians and administrators until the time indicated by his father. So, with this word, we commence to comprehend why, even though we are heirs of God, who possesses everything, a significant number of children continue to live their lives in a manner similar to that of slaves. Why is it that when you are below the legal age, in the initial interpretation of the term, it denotes lack of maturity or inability. What is the rationale behind referring to a minor as incapable? You would still be a slave. This applies to all aspects of life. If you are not mature enough to live far from sin, you will be living in a way that resembles being a slave to sin. If you are mature enough to handle the money that God puts in your hands, you will always live like a slave to money. Do you understand? 
Yeah, write to me in chat. Want to be here with me? Yeah, message me in the chat. Get in touch. Let's chat. Yes, I understand. Yes, I am right here. Therefore, that is the reason why you must have your repentance and clarity, ensuring that you have to free yourself from slavery and banks in order to achieve true liberation and financial independence. So please take note of this important biblical lesson for your financial life today. Ensure that you write it down. As long as you cannot handle your finances, you will be enslaved by money and debt. I consistently reiterate what is important. As long as you are unable to handle your finances, you will remain a slave to money and debt. And do you want to know the worst part? You will not live the purposes that God has for your life. I'm not talking about tithing or offering or anything. No, it's not this. I am referring to the capability and maturity to manage the responsibilities that God has entrusted to you. The Bible states that all individuals will receive based on their capabilities. Affirmative. That's where the expression comes from. Be faithful in the little things. As you show yourself capable, God will put more in your hands. And I inquire of you, what is your capacity to manage today? You possess a massive inheritance awaiting you when God starts to see what you're capable of. I'm telling you again because it's seriously important. Write it down because yes, it's very important. You have a huge inheritance waiting for you on the day God starts to see what you're capable of. Yeah? And does this apply to the material world as well as the spiritual world? You are a child. You are a beloved daughter of God. You have an inheritance waiting for you for the day when God sees that you're capable of showing more and more. He's not going to waste it. I know it may be painful for you to hear this today. And I admit that it was for me as well. Yes, definitely it was. Perhaps you are aware, perhaps you are not aware of my story. But the truth is that I was enslaved by money, debts, and secured loans for a number of years in my life. And it was extremely, extremely difficult for me to acknowledge, yeah, that I was held in bondage by debts. Loans, particularly secured ones, transform you into a slave because they simply deprive you of your freedom to manage your money. You don't have anything to choose from. And the worst part is that many see this as something positive. It's something from the world. It's not something from God. Because sometimes interest rates are theoretically lower than some types of loans. However, nothing that deprives you of your freedom is worthwhile. Every single thing that deprives you of your freedom is extremely costly and places you in a state of bondage. And I only freed myself from this when I decided to stop running away, when I decided to get out of the comfortable situation of asking for a loan to pay another one, to face my finances head on and take control of them. That's when I learned that every time you borrowed money to pay off another loan, you were digging yourself into another hole. And do you know what the primary lesson you need to learn in order to get out of the debt hole is? And what about loans? It is time to cease digging. Yes, cease requesting loans. And take a look at what Proverbs 28 verses 1 to 1 and 12 state. Yeah, the antagonist flees despite the absence of pursuers, but the virtuous individual is courageous like a lion. Until when are you going to deny the importance of managing well what God has entrusted to you? Until what time will you be under the legal age and work in exchange for monetary compensation? Being a slave to money and spending your whole life just to pay the bills? Until when? There's nothing that saddens me more than seeing people working just to pay the bills. Being slaves to money, working, working day after day, and at the end of the month, they have nothing. They do not have additional funds. They do not have financial tranquility. Employment is undoubtedly God's intention, but enslavement is certainly not God's intention for your existence. And that's exactly how eight out of 10 Christians live as slaves, not having enough money, not having their finances under control, having debts. And now I will dive in and give you more information about what I have said so far. Please give it a like now. Yes, yes, give it a like. 
Yeah, give it a like now and share it. The class is truly exceptional. Share it with the other individuals in the group. Everything I've told you is one of the biblical foundations that explain why there are so many Christians who thrive and are slaves to money. And if you haven't seen Katya's testimony, who thought this wasn't for her, but what changed in her life and in the lives of hundreds of people who started to understand these teachings, everyone without exception has become better managers of their finances. And the key to achieving financial peace has everything to do with this. But now you have the ability to speak, but doctor, what defines a good finance manager? How can I determine who is or is not a competent manager? The response for me is extremely, extremely straightforward. Note it down. If you are present, who desires to know that you are in need of a skilled manager to fulfill your requirements? How can I determine who is or is not a competent manager? I am going to speak at this moment, inform you at this moment. I consider a good manager to be someone who has their finances under control in accordance with biblical principles of finance. Yes, look, the person who can do this is free and not a slave to finances. To have your finances under control, comply with all, I mean all, the biblical principles about finances, which are quite a few. Not only decreasing, not many and many. I'll discuss many of them here with you in the upcoming lessons. I will also talk about emotional control. I will talk about crises, paying off debts, overcoming obstacles, the law of sowing, the principle of stewardship, the law of the fifth part, the law of servitude, being faithful in the little things, about investments and various topics, other biblical principles. But for real transformation, it's not enough to just learn these principles. I am getting you ready for this. I need to work with you to develop a new way of thinking and foster a fresh mindset. I need to eliminate certain beliefs that restrict you from making progress because I desire your advancement. We have already demolished the initial concept in this particular session today in the first class. Yeah, a lot of people think there aren't any biblical motivations for having money. And here you have already learned at least 12 biblical reasons to take action. And if you haven't had the chance to see class one yet, you can check it out because it's still in the area. But please be aware that the recording will be taken out of the area. And now I want to give you the gold here so that you can definitely understand how to achieve financial peace. And observe something of great importance here. I see that many people think that way. How do people think? When I eliminate debt, I will have peace. When I have adequate funds to buy my own house, I'll have peace. When I have the funds to make a dream come true, then I'll have peace of mind. When I am out of the bank, then I will experience peace. When I am free from the dependency of my job, I will finally have a sense of peace. They always believe they'll find peace once they achieve the desired goal they strive for. The concept of financial peace is entirely unrelated to the matter being discussed at this moment. I want to inform you today, it is extremely serious that peace is not in the destiny you desire. Peace is in the process, in the process of adhering to God's principles and guidelines. When you strive to adhere to all the principles of a good admin, you experience peace. Peace is in progress. Do you desire to dwell in peace? Peace is not within the realm of possibility. Peace resides in the ongoing process of obedience. When you embark on God's path, you experience peace because your financial life is established on a solid foundation. And irrespective of the strength of the wind, it will not budge. And this is the result for individuals who set out to apply this learning and fulfill the biblical principles concerning finances. They initiate peace because this route, obedience to principles, leads you to a state of peace. I repeat, this is important. We're reaching the end. This is really important here. Peace is not in the cards. Peace is discovered in obeying the biblical principles of finances. Who desires financial peace? Yeah, they write in the chat, I want. So jot it down. God takes pleasure in the process. Look, a pregnant woman. 
We are aware that a pregnant woman gives birth to a baby in a span of nine months. But if the woman desires to give birth to a baby within a duration of two months, it is not feasible or achievable. There's a process and God will make it right in the process. Not possible yet. I am aware that you desire to, but it is not feasible due to it being a procedure that the expectant woman must undergo. So I inquire, is this a highly significant matter? Have you been compliant to God in your financial existence? Did you create your backup reservation? Have you practiced the law of the fifth part? Do you multiply what God puts in your hands? Have you been faithful in managing what little you have? I'm asking you, have you been contributing? These are some of the principles you will acquire here at the Biblical Finance Intensive Program. And I'm aware that you will be highly committed here with me until the conclusion and that they will guide you towards attaining financial peace. When you shield yourself from emotions and use a process, a method that helps you adhere to these principles, you experience peace. And that is what occurred to my student, Lia Laiz, who had no peace and observed what occurred to her. The reason I managed to control my dreaming is that a while ago, I reached a point where I couldn't sleep anymore. I had no peace. I had no way out. I had no escape. I found myself completely helpless, unable to do anything on my own anymore. Consequently, I turned to prayer, seeking divine intervention for the restoration of my hand. I realized that I could no longer rely on my own abilities and needed God's help. I prayed fervently, placing my trust in him, knowing that he is the ultimate source of power and guidance. With unwavering faith, I sought solace and direction from God, believing that he would hear my prayers and grant me the miracle of a healed hand. So, like, I want to thank God from the bottom of my heart, and I want to say that one day I prayed like never before. The Lord extends his right hand, delivers me from evil, and expands my borders in life. My Lord made preparations for me to partake in the opulent Christian feast that awaited. In the present day, I express that I no longer have any debts. I am enjoying a state of peace. My relationship has undergone a significant transformation. I hold on to hope, and I confidently state that I have a bright and promising future ahead of me. And I humbly ask God to bless Dr. Tyler and her team, Dr. Rodrigo and all of the individuals who are present at the location, actively supporting and providing valuable answers to those in need. I thank God for your effort, and I ask that he blesses you abundantly as well. You all have been the daily sustenance of God in my life. Every single day there, I was studying, I was observing, I was gaining knowledge, keeping myself up to date, my mind was unlocked. Currently, I state that I possess a revitalized mind. I declare that I possess faith and hope, and I have transformed into an individual who is once again governed by the Holy Spirit. Money no longer controls me, I control it. Do you want to have financial peace? Fall in love with the process and surrender to it. Understanding what will give you peace is not the end result, but rather it's about going through the process. I repeat because it's important. Financial peace is found in the process, not in the destination. Who here already has a different perspective with just these initial two classes? Hit me up in the chat, dude. Hey, yeah, I want to check this out. Write to me in the chat. Yeah, yeah. And allow me to stay here in class. Send me messages in the chat. Yeah, that is good. That is good. So if you're being blessed, I want to invite you to be a super committed person too. Yes, the one who will transform other people's financial lives and as good Christians, share this knowledge with more people. And considering the recognition of the highly dedicated individuals, we have an update regarding this event. Yes, and as I mentioned earlier, the first announcement is that we will be providing participation certificates to all those who actively participate until the conclusion of the event and remain in the WhatsApp group until the end. Is that clear? But that's not enough. Just join in. It's important to bless other people with that same knowledge, and we've also created a way to identify who those people are that are blessing others. Let me explain. These are the folks who are going to point out other folks. And what are you going to do to invite more people? Are you like interested in Owen Lee? Will you forward this link to the individual? Take a look, cristalrico.com invitation slash, all right? And this is truly, truly excellent. And observe in the church's WhatsApp groups, in the prayer groups, send yourself the link in the groups and share it on social media because it is extremely, extremely important so that we can have a greater and greater number of individuals present at this event. Look, in tomorrow's class, class three, the topic I'm going to cover is about dreams and how to make them happen even this year, okay? 
The title is How to Construct Your Financial Foundation. Thus, it will be a must-see. Where are the super committed people who are going to come back here in class three? Yes, so get ready because the reminder for the end of class three is here on YouTube. Always stay tuned to the WhatsApp group and me on our YouTube channel. By the way, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe now, okay? And now I'm going to give you the sentence from the class. What is the catchphrase of the class? Financial peace is found in the process, not in the final destination, you know? Generate an Instagram story, ensuring to tag the phrase we learned in today's class. Is that okay with you? So you are able to acquire your final certificate. You will need to be knowledgeable about the keywords from today's class and stay in the WhatsApp group for this event until the conclusion. And also go to the attendance list that the team is going to post in the comments now. And because you're super committed, you'll also be blessed and get to be part of a blessing here, which I'll talk to you about at the end of our event. And if you're not already in our WhatsApp groups, click on the link provided in the description of this video. And look, there are at least three practical mistakes that prevent people from having their finances under control. I'll tell you about these mistakes in stage two of the intensive biblical finance. It's basically a new course, all produced and recorded with support materials and a community so that you can apply everything you're already learning here and that you'll continue learning over there, okay? And this second stage will be exclusively for them to sign up for free in the link that is located down here on this page. Yes, it is a closed and free course exclusively for registered participants. Therefore, if you have not yet enrolled, please ensure to secure your spot as soon as possible because the course is free of charge. The keyword for today's class is process for your certificate. Ensure that you remember to leave your name on the attendance list in the comments section of the class. So let's summarize what do we have to do now. Hey, do a stories on Instagram if you have it with today's event phrase tag. Two individuals need to share the referral link and invite a larger number of people in order to be blessed with the profound wisdom found in the Bible. Three. If you haven't seen today's first class yet, it's still in the area, so don't miss it and don't stay out because you still have time to watch it. Yeah, it's going to leave the area soon, yeah, and come back tomorrow live and direct invite one more person, okay? If you enjoyed our class, feel free to give me a like and write your thoughts here in the comment section. May you be blessed in our class today if I have the pleasure of seeing you in class three of our intensive biblical finance program. May God bless you. See you soon. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off. I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following. Following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary, which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on I also paid off another debt. So for me, this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well. I began investing some money and I did not have a car. I used to walk. I have a car now. It is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. 
I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I'm calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended that I ended with 1,500 riyas. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it, so there were quite a few things there, open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow, and now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying. I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I am able to sleep in peace. The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had. And presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. But today, I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day. 